joining us today. It's our pleasure. And I, would like to, I would like to introduce my associates, if I may. Of course. This is uh, Mr. Kenny Chu, he's our office uh, tax manager. And this is Ms. Roxana Reyes, she's a tax associate. And I invite you to join us because they uh, both work very heavily in this area and I find this would give a comprehensive uh, view of what we do here. And we'll find financial solutions. Lovely. So perhaps if we could start just initially, if you could introduce us to your firm and um, what exactly it is that you do, what services you provide. Absolutely. We are a uh, tax practice, uh, I'm a CPA, and these two are on the way to become CPAs. We provide taxation, business plan, legalization, and a whole myriad of accounting services. Uh, one of the areas we specialize in is expat or American to begin abroad taxation, and uh, that's why we're here. We have many clients from all over the world, the Gulf region, uh, Southeast Asia, and uh, expats who have recently moved to America, and uh, we're known for this, and uh, that's why uh, we're having this event. So I understand that you, in fact, used to be based in Bangkok. Is that why there's the particular um, interest with expat law? Oh, yes. I lived in Bangkok for four years, from 1990 to 1994. I used to work uh, in the academy for Ernst Young while I was there, for part of the time I was there. And I have a special affinity in Bangkok, I speak some Thai, with Thai Daika, you know I, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I never forget my Thai, it's amazing, no matter how many years I'm away, I, uh, my Thai seems to get better, it simmers in my mind. And I definitely have a special affinity with Bangkok, with Thailand, uh, that's why I, uh, we are uh, advertising in Thailand, and if our uh, practice uh, or demand for what we uh, do, Rose in Thailand will actually go and have a, a live physical office. But so far, we only work through internet uh, with the uh, expat community in Thailand. And I can definitely relate to uh, Americans living there because I was one. And one of the things I remember from my years of living there, uh, I'm dating myself. Uh, at that time, they didn't have uh, internet, and we went to the US Embassy there on the wireless road, and they would give us tax forms. And the tax forms uh, came with no explanation. And when we asked for explanations, again, this is before the internet time. Uh, they said, sorry, we don't have anybody to help. So we were completely on our own. I remember the frustration I felt. Uh, I needed to ask questions. Uh, and my friend, because uh, I had, as you know, many Americans who to teach. I had many teacher friends who needed help. And at that time, this is 24 years ago, there was nobody. Uh, who could help us. So when I came back and I eventually became a CPA, uh, I kept that in mind and I'm glad to be on the other side and be able to help my fellow expatriates uh, in Bangkok. So perhaps on that note then, you can take us through um, some of the more pertinent tax issues that US expats living in Thailand should be aware of um, in today's times. Absolutely. Uh, most basic thing perhaps to remember is that you guys are lucky because you get a two month uh, extension of time from the IRS to file. Everybody who lives here has an April 15th tax deadline to file. But just because you are considered an expat uh, or expatriate uh, who has the main principal residence outside of the US, you get an automatic two month extension. So your deadline is June 15th, which is coming up in a few days. If you cannot be prepared uh, by June 15, you get an extension to October 15. So you get an additional four months. But to get that, you have to file the form called the uh, 4868. Uh, that's the most basic thing. The second, uh, perhaps most comprehensive thing, is that your earned income is excluded from US taxation by the amount of 91500 now, you, uh, the U.S. government is still expects you to be put that income, but you're not taxed on of your earned income. That does not mean passive income or uh, income from sources like gambling or etc., but uh, money that you actually work for. 
So the first 91,500 is excluded from taxation. But American um, citizens and like U.S. persons are expected to report a worldwide income to the other. I just want to know about it, even if they don't tax it. And uh, the next thing would be that the taxes that you pay to the local government, in this case Thailand, would be, uh, you could use it as a credit. So the U.S. government gives you a credit for foreign taxes that you pay. Uh, the form to fill out for that is 1116, that you report how much you gave to a foreign government, and therefore you get an exclusion from the, uh, this government. So the idea behind that is very simple, to refer to uh, uh, taxpayers and major earners, they don't want them to pay taxes twice in the same way. Uh, by the way, the form to fill out for that exclusion, to claim that exclusion of 91,500 that we were talking about is form 2555. And uh, the next thing that uh, expats need to know is the foreign bank and financial accounts rules, or FBAR, as it's commonly known. And what that entails is if uh, you own a bank account outside of the country, the US government wants to know about it if the balance goes over 10000 And the deadline to file for that is June 30th, because you file that in the Department of Treasury, not the IRS. So it goes to a different place. And for that, there's no extension. You need to report by June 30th. If you don't, you can write a letter of explanation saying why you did not follow by June 30th. And that's uh, their idea of an extension. But there's no formal official form uh, that you can fill out like form 40 for an extension. And I'm going to be a little more technical. If uh, you have more than $200,000, uh, in a bank account or possess in, in, in any other forms in stocks, bonds. There's some more forms that you have to fill out to report that. It's called Form 8938, and that's where FATCA, F A T C A, comes in, which is a uh, uh, statement of specified foreign financial assets. But that's getting a little more technical. I'll wait till you ask me the next question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you just mentioned um, a few things then that US expats specifically need to report to their government. Just again, summarize for us very briefly exactly the information that US expats need to ensure that they have told their government about. Well, uh, the main thing to know is that America, uh, IRS, wants to know about all the money that you earn. Uh, to put it in very plain language, if you make money, the uh, IRS, the U.S. government wants to know about it. Now, not all of it is taxable, a lot of it is excluded from taxation. So report it and then justify why um, it's not taxable, like it's in the first 91500 or if you already pay foreign taxes on it, or if it belongs to somebody else, or some other special circumstance applies to you, you can always explain that, if that informs in writing. But the main thing to uh, be concerned about is not having any unreported income. Because unreported income is where people get in trouble, where they have monies or income or assets, uh, from bank accounts to whatever form of assets that they don't report, that they think it's okay because they're outside of the US. That's where people get in trouble. That's why all these FBAR and FATCA and uh, all complicated rules come into play, because the uh, US government is on to people who uh, have been doing this. And people have been doing this for years, and it's just been growing. And at one time, uh, the Treasury Department realized that they're uh, missing out on billions of dollars in taxation just for uh, money to be outside of the US. So they started getting strict on it. They started passing these rules. Most of these rules have been in effect only since 2010. And they formed various treaties with foreign governments, like the Swiss government. Swiss was one of the very favorite places in Switzerland where people went to hide their monies because they have a very secretive uh, nature of the financial system. But now because of the treaty that the US government has with them, uh, that's no longer the case. Uh, uh, various Swiss banks on their own are reported to the US government, which American citizens have monies. Uh, now, with Thailand, Thailand is not known for a place for rich Americans go to hide money in, but all the same. Uh, if you have for, uh, assets or monies or income, anything of a financial nature, you need to report it to the IRS. Uh, again, uh, talk to a good financial professional, because a good financial professional will guide you how to, um, where exemptions come in and where you're not supposed to 
uh, or you can uh, not pay taxes on. But at any rate, you need to report. If, uh, that's, if there's one thing you get out of this, whoever is watching, that, that would be it. Okay, thanks, that's helpful. So sort of, um, more is best really. Tell more and um, rather than keep information to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Just report it. Once you report it, uh, again, reporting doesn't mean really you have to pay taxes on it. Just report it and then uh, talk to your financial professional about how to not pay taxes on it. Uh, legally. Okay. Thank because you. again, government provides wide exclusions and credits for expats and that you know you could use to your benefit. So it's all it can all be done. I know people who make well over a hundred thousand uh, overseas. Uh, some of our clients, and very quite legally, they don't pay uh, any taxes on it uh, because they use various exclusions and uh, credits that come into play in their in certain steps. So, uh, report it, but then uh, seek advice on how to not to legally not to pay taxes on it. Yeah, great, great advice, thank you. So, how do the expat tax laws differ, say, for a resident of Thailand? to someone who's maybe a semi-resident. So for example, a lot of our clients spend six months of the year in Thailand, six months of the year in the US. Do the laws differ for that? Well, you might take over? Sure. Um, for expats that are residents of Thailand, um, they're taxed on all income that they earn. So that includes income earned in Thailand as well as for Earn sources um, for non-resident uh, expats living in Thailand um, at a period of time. They are to only tax on income derived from Thailand. Now, the main thing to be concerned about, uh, the main difference that being a resident or non-resident is that June 15th tax deadline. Otherwise, no matter who you are and where you live, as long as you're a U.S. person, U.S. person is any U.S. citizen or any uh, uh, green card holder, or even if you're married to a U.S. citizen, the main thing to remember is that, again, the U.S. government wants to know about the money that you make. Uh, if you made it outside of the U.S., you get those exclusion or credits that come into play for expats. If you made it in the U.S., you know, other laws apply to it. So you could be a resident of China, <clears throat> and you make your money in the U.S., or vice versa, if you're a resident of the U.S., someone making money in Thailand. Let's say, for example, a uh, famous person goes to Thailand and does some marketing or advertising uh, and makes uh, $200,000 in one month. So uh, even though they're a U.S. Uh, citizen and U.S. resident, the uh, uh, foreign earned income rules come into play for them, even though they're not at all concerned expats. So it's more about foreign earned income that the U.S. government is concerned about rather than your designation as an expat or non-expat or um, resident of America. So briefly before you, you mentioned something called Factor. Can you tell us a little bit more about what this actually is, please? You want to? I'm going to let Roxy introduce herself, but uh, introduce Factor. Okay, I can answer that question. Um, Factor actually stands for Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. Um, the purpose of it was to is to reveal all foreign assets that U.S. citizens living in U.S. or um, U.S. citizens living abroad, expats, um, foreign assets that they own. Um, previously, many U.S. citizens would hide their foreign assets in other countries to avoid reporting them on their tax returns. Um, for tax purposes, uh, expats would need to file the form 8938, which Ms. Milfred uh, previously mentioned. Um, and also, if uh, um, you, uh, you may say, okay, I don't have that much money, I didn't make 200000 or I don't have that much money in my savings, how many people do? Um, it doesn't mean you're completely off the hook. You could still have, let's say even for a period of time, uh, for whatever reason, let's say your parents uh, shipped some money to you in Thailand, and for a period of time you had more than $10,000 in your bank account. So you're not subject to Form 8938 that Kevin just mentioned, but you still need to file uh, what's called FinCEN, F-I-N-C-E-N Form 114, which is the F-bar form, report 
ولی اگه هر در بعدی فرمی کن اگه هر در بعدی هر در من رو کنی یه سوان یه به یه سال باید می کنی یه ها تکس داره یه جا سی دات یه ها دیس پاری هم پایی اگه این باید فردر دن دات در آر پی پاو who don't need to legally file taxes because they make less than the threshold of uh, uh, salary deductions and personal exemptions. Still, because they have so much money in their bank accounts, especially uh, people in over in what we call the senior citizens, or uh, over a certain age, elderly, they tend to have a lot of, uh, huge amounts of savings and not so much in earnings. Um, they still need to report either FBAR or the Form 8938 as uh, specified by Smart uh, Financial Assets Rules. So it's all about reporting. Uh, if you're not sure what to report and whatnot, again, uh, make sure you talk to a financial professional who knows. Uh, but uh, most people who don't get in trouble, and they're quite innocent. Some of them are even so, you know, uh, advanced in years that it may, you may consider them, you know, uh, perhaps a little uh, senile, uh, but still they get in trouble because, simply because they don't report and they don't have the good, you know, guidance or uh, professional support to guide to that tell what to do. So it's all about reporting. So just taking from that, then it's important to remember that just because somebody's not working in Thailand, if they've got savings, they should still be reported as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I know it could be very confusing. Um, like, you know, the terms are very technical, the amounts, the limits, the thresholds, as they call them. There are so many that it could be quite confusing. Somebody is not working in this field day in and day out. It's so important to talk to somebody who knows. Call um, a financial professional, a CPA, uh, a tax advisor, an attorney. Uh, I know it's maybe hard to find in Thailand, in overseas, but uh, again, you live in a of internet and uh, easy access. The world village is getting smaller and smaller. Make sure you talk to somebody before you fill out that um, tax return. That is why uh, they give you that extra months of time to file because they realize people overseas may have limited resources. So you have extra two months, use it well. So for a typical uh, expat person, you have from January 1st to June 15th, that's almost half the year. And if you need more time, like we said before, you can finally essentially get an additional four months. Use your time, but do your research, do your homework, make sure you report everything. The penalties could be pretty harsh. So I'm not what are the penalties? Oh my gosh. Uh, if um, you're considered uh, an innocent uh, violator, uh, you could uh, end up spending out just 25% of what you have just paying any penalties. If you're, they determine that it was willful, that you meant to hide it, it could be up to 50% of the value of the account. So let's say if you have 200,000 in the savings account or overseas, you could lose half of it, 100,000, plus it could assess criminal penalties. So when you come back to the US, uh, God forbid, uh, you know, you could have a uh, whole other issue to deal with. So, but if you just simply had reported it, uh, Again, reporting doesn't mean you have to pay taxes on it. Just reporting it, uh, you could have been saved. Thank you. That's really helpful, and I'm sure all of our viewers will take something away from that. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope our answers were helpful. Maybe if you were able to help uh, a few people, <clears throat> I think you've got our intention, which was to help our next time. Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us.